is man distant from God? The verse in chapter 13 in this week's Parsha says, that after the ways of God we are supposed to walk. Rashi points out a little earlier in the Parsha that the word achare connotes distance between one party and the second one. And so the verse seems to be telling us that there is a distance between man and God. Yet, when I grew up, I was always taught, I was inculcated with the idea that God is always close to man, that there is no distance between us and a Kaddish Baruch Hu, and that there's nothing that needs to be resolved in that area. So the Chavetz Chaim, he was so taken aback, so disturbed by this idea that there could be any distance between man and God, that he says that the distance that the Torah is referring to is a distance that man himself subjectively perceives between himself and between God. But there's no distance in truth. And if there is a distance that a person feels personally from God, then the Torah is simply saying, that we follow in the ways of God, and the more we perform God's mitzvot, the closer we feel to God as well. However, Shmuel Rezovsky says, God's ways, God himself, is really high up, is really far away, not just physically, but spiritually and morally, ethically, than we could hope to achieve. We can't get to the top of that mountain immediately. We can't get that close to God. But, what is the Pasuk, what is the verse telling us? That we're supposed to walk in the ways of God. We're supposed to try to get closer to God, even if it is impossible journey. We try ever to strive closer to God. Now, what's a good way, what's a good vehicle for bringing ourselves closer to God? Well, before I answer that, I'll tell you three ways that the Torah warns us about not going and straying further from God. There are three categories in the Parsha that talk about instances, three instances that a person is likely to be led astray from God to worship idolatry, to worship Avodah Zarah instead. One such instance in chapter 13 talks about the false prophet. A prophet comes into town, he performs some sort of sign or miracle, and then what do we do? We say, oh, okay, there's some truth to what he's talking about, he's a legitimate prophet. And then he says, oh, now that I have all of your attention, by the way, I received another prophecy that says that instead of 613 mitzvahs in the Torah, there's only going to be 612 commandments in the Torah. That's a problem. And the Abarbanel tells us that this is a general framework, a category, that tells us about how we are susceptible sometimes that if someone is in a position of authority, someone is in a position or a mentorship position, that even though they're generally helpful, we have to be concerned that that's also a position where someone wields authority over others that can be misused and can misguide people away from the ways of God. Similarly, the second instance that a person is susceptible to straying from the ways of God is under the influence of a relative, a family member. That is likely also because you say, well, if my brother is doing something, father's doing something, it must be right. I mean, my family knows what they're talking about, and generally that, that's something we like to assume, that our family's all good people, right? But a person who is a family member wields a certain influence over his relatives. And if a, one relative says, I think idolatry is a great idea, he could bring others along with him as well, God forbid. And then there's the third and final category, which is the ear honey dachas the wayward city that everyone decided they're going to worship Avodah Zarah, they're going to worship idols there. The Torah warns us, don't say to yourself, oh, well, you know, there's a Mishnah on Pirkei Avos that says, Al-Tifrosh Minat Sibor, don't separate yourself from the congregation. And also a person who knows a little bit of Jewish law, they may say, well, there's a verse that says, Achrei Rabim Lahatos, that if the majority believes that something is right, in Jewish law, we follow the majority. 
So if the majority of the people here in town are doing something, even if I think it might be wrong, maybe I ought to follow them as well. The Torah says, no, nope, you do not follow them, but rather you stick to the ways of God, even if everyone else is doing something else. Now, these three categories, the false prophet, the relative, and the wayward city, those are three instances that a person can bring someone away from God. But those are also three instances that, if done right, could bring someone closer to God. After all, we all need to find mentors. We all need to find teachers, people that we can consult in life. We need to find true prophets, not false prophets. Secondly, we also need to find relatives. We need to find friends, confidants, people that we can trust. That forms the foundation, the basis of our lives. And we also need to find, in addition to that, a community, a community that we can benefit from and that we can contribute to as well. If we want to find a way, how does man become closer to God? These three instances are ways of becoming closer to God. Finding the right people, finding the right teachers, the right community to invest in, to become a part of, that is how we become closer to God. These are three instances not just to become further from God, but if done right, they bring us closer to God as well. And thank God we have that opportunity here in Stanford. Our community, of course, there's still COVID-19 and we're still trying to be as safe as possible. But we're already looking into opportunities to start getting out of the house a bit in a way that's a safe and correct manner. We had an event for some of the young families or young adults the previous week, and we're exploring different avenues. So in these coming weeks, we may ask ourselves how we're going to benefit from the community, but also ask how we can invest in the community, ask how I can contribute to our community, and how I can get involved with events, how I can get involved with programming, get involved with different chesed opportunities and learning. Please reach out to us. Please ask how you can be involved in our community, and we'd be happy to include you, and please be in touch. Have a wonderful Shabbos, everyone.